<laughs> I love my chisels. Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. A while ago, a guy by the name of Blue Jean Beekeeping Dad, um, he challenged me to make a box. And I put out a return video saying, I will make a box, but I'm going to one-up you and say that I'm going to make a box using only chisels. And uh, yeah, um, okay, let's do this. But that was back in like June or July, and it's been a little while, and I figured I finally should get around to this, uh, this project. So I decided to make a box out of a hunk of firewood using only chisels. And this is a lot of fun. It was kind of an interesting experiment to, to hold myself back. Now I will be using a mallet, yes, a mallet is a tool. Um, I could just as easily use a block of wood and it really wouldn't be much of a problem. Um, but I have a mallet at hand and I don't want to be rubbing up my hand on a hunk of wood. You know, if I were out in the woods, I could probably go find a stick that would work perfectly for a mallet. Um, so that's about all we need to make a box with a sitting lid and a bit of carving into it and uh, do that out of a block of firewood. So let's dive in and take a look at the project. Some of my first projects started this very same way. A block of white oak firewood. Yes, even when I'm using firewood, I want to use the best. So it's firewood for me. <laughs> the first thing I want to do is to split off the chunk that I want to use for the lid from the chunk I want to use from the body. That way I get a fairly close to continuous grain uh, from the end cap. So rather than using a fro, I'm just using chisels and I'm going to chop down from one end and then slowly work the crack wider until I can break it off. Now I have a piece for the lid and a piece for the body. Let's start with the body and start flattening out one face of it. This face will be the open side of the box and it'll give me a place that I can actually cut the box into it. I can use the chisel itself as a straight edge to see if it's straight along the surface where I need to take off more material. And you're gonna see this, this stabbing motion, one hand close to the end, one hand um, back on the pommel, and I'm going to be kind of paring out um, chunks of wood, and the, the, that motion actually gives it a bit of a curved cut, so it's starting steep and ending shallow. Another trick you can do with a chisel is using the side as a scraper, and uh, you can turn a little burr on there. In this case, I just used it as a square rather than having a burr, but you can get a nice, uh, fairly smooth surface with that. Next up, let's start cutting the mortise. This will be the box actual, and I'm gonna be basically laying out the marks with a chisel, because I don't have a marking knife, and I want to lay out where I want it, and then start by chopping in. And this will become the stop cut that everything gets removed to. So you can see how on one end I'll start working out and I'll chop deeper and then I'll come in and remove the chips out and then I will chop deeper and then I'll come in and remove the chips out and I'll just keep removing that until I get down to the depth I want. In this case I'm going to make it about an inch and a quarter by about an inch and a half deep. Not a huge box, just a nice little thing to kind of be a, a keepsake box. The other things I'm going to be doing is paring down the sides, making sure that those stay nice and clean and then I'll come in, remove more chips and uh, chop out again. A lot of rinse and repeat and uh, keep going. Once I chop out one end, uh, then I'll chop out the other end. And it's just a, a somewhat slow process, but very enjoyable because these, these large chips and curls that come popping out of there are very fun. And this is a uh, kind of a primeval enjoyment that um, I'm drawn to. I don't know, maybe I'm just weird. <laughs> On either end, I want to make sure I keep it nice and clean. So once I get down to the depth I want, I will uh, trim off the end grain, get a nice, sharp, sharp chisel, and you can uh, trim down very nicely. Also want to clean up the sidewalls, going across the grain in this way um, actually is, gives you a fairly nice edge, a fairly nice uh, side to the inside of the box. But then after finishing one side, it's flipping around, do the other side. Rinse and repeat. Uh, the only thing is on this end, you can see I'm fairly close to the end of the block. And I have a line about halfway between the end of the box and the end of the block of firewood. Eventually I'm going to cut it off there. And uh, so I'm being very careful not to blow out the end of this. And every stop cut, I'm making sure not to put any pressure on the end of that box. I don't want that to pop off. Once I've cut down on both ends, then I can remove the majority of the waste in between the two. And this, you really get these big chunks that come flying out of there. And uh, again, extremely enjoyable. This is, uh, this is a, a, a fun task if you want to just experiment and play and try something new. This is, this is well worth it, a very good idea. Again, I'll be doing that same stabbing motion again at the bottom of the box, 
trying to smooth it out, getting into the, any of the high spots, and uh, getting a fairly nice little surface underneath. The next thing I need to do is cut this to length. Now, I left the entire firewood block on here because it was just easier to work with. Uh, but now that I've cut off the box, um, I want to cut it to length. And so I'm going to be basically doing the exact same thing I did on the end of each box. I'm going to chop in, and then I'll remove the waste, and then chop in, and then remove the waste. Creating that stop cut, making sure that things don't blow out the end, and then that allows you to come in and remove large chips. So I'm basically making this wedge down to my uh, my, my chopping line, and I'll keep going and keep going until I until I break through. You see, how I've been rotating the box each time. Uh, that way, allow allows me to not have to cut all the way through from one side. I'm only having to cut. Um, most of the way through on all four sides, so that actually ends up being a little bit easier. But then eventually you get to the point where, pop, you're through, and you have cut a log with a chisel. Um, yeah, voila. Now, if I were in the woods, I'd probably use a hatchet, but a chisel works just fine. I need to clean up one end and uh, get that as kind of a reference face, even though I'm not referencing anything because I don't have anything to square off of. But uh, I don't know why... Uh, planing off end grain is so much fun and this is a really really low angle cut because this chisel is sharpened at about 20 degrees and so you can get these really nice beautiful curls on the end grain of white oak and I'll work at it from one end, one side and I'll work at it from the other side until I get it nice and flat all the way across the end. Next thing I do, do need to do are the three sides of the box. So each side will be done the exact same way as the top originally was. I'll remove most of the material the aggressive way and then I'll come in with that stabbing motion and uh, kind of pair and, uh, stab out these areas. And I, each of these cuts, you can see how I'm starting at a high angle and ending at a low angle. So I'm, I'm kind of like scooping out uh, the material. And it's a, 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 fairly, a fairly easy way to get a nice flat surface. Once those three sides have been cleaned off, I can draw my attention to the last side and uh, cut that off and clean it up just the exact same way I cut it to length, um, only a little bit easier. And voila, we have a box. Now let's work on a lid. Now that piece I chopped off earlier, I'm going to cut it to length as well. Um, the exact same way I cut the block, I'm going to chop in, remove the waste, chop in, remove the waste, chop in, remove the waste, flip it over, do the exact same thing on the other side. And then eventually I get to the point where, yeah, I'm losing my temper. Let's just break it and be done with it. And voila, I have cut the piece in half. <laughs> Next thing I need to do is flatten this off. And this will be the face that mates with the box. So number one, I want to make sure I have the continuous grain going through the two boxes so I have the two um, set in the same place. And then I want to make sure it's nice and flat and seats with the box well. Once that has all been flattened out, I can transfer the marks of the box to the top. So I'll just hold it in place and then using the corner of the chisel, I'm going to scratch in the mark. I don't want to cut in the mark with the chisel uh, because it will move all over, the, all over the place and follow the grain. But once I have that mark on the wood, then I can um, pare down to that mark with a chisel and bring this close to its marking lines. I don't want to take it all the way to the marking lines. I want to just take it close to it. I can clean that up a little bit later. And then same thing on the end where I can where I broke it off. We can actually just come through and uh, chisel off the end. So now I have a piece and a box, but I want the box to sit on there and not fall off. So I'm going to make a, um, a rabbit running all the way around this so that the middle of the box will actually recess into the mortise, uh, the middle of the lid will recess into the mortise of the box. So I'm going to chop in all the way around and then pare out um, that little rabbit. And I'm only making this thing a little bit more than an eighth inch deep. Uh, it really doesn't need to be that much. You can see how it just pair out from one end to the other and uh, I have made that stop cut so I'm not going to be running into the middle of the box and it just uh, makes a little rabbit fairly quick and easy. Once that's, be done, once that's been done we can test it, fit the box on there and uh, because I didn't have any way of transferring the inside of the box marks to it I just had to guess at it and I just keep going back and forth and back and forth until I get a nice clean cut and it actually fits on there and then you have a box. Um, there isn't that much more to it. I could, if I want to, stop at this point, but I want to clean it up a little bit more. So next thing I want to do is work on this top. I'm going to round it all over and shape it down. I found the easiest thing is just to hold the two of them together, and this allows me to pair off the box, the, the lid itself exactly to the box and get a really nice clean surface between the two with a, with a well, actually a perfect transfer from between the two. 
And as they move over time, because they're from the same piece, they're going to move together. Then I want to round over the top and just kind of give that more of like a, a, a handmade feel. It's almost like it's from the uh, medieval ages. Um, just kind of more of a, a handmade rough timber look. <laughs> I'm going to do the same thing on the ends of the box. It's kind of an ingrain work, so you just have to be a little more careful. Um, skewing the blade, aiming um, towards the end of the grain. And then pair it off, chamfer it, round it over a little bit. And uh, then basically, voila, a box. Um, I really don't need to do anything more to this. It is a functioning box other than finish. Uh, but I want to do a little bit of carving on this just to make it look a little bit more medieval Celtic. Um, so I've done several videos in the past on carving with just bench, chis bench chisels, and I'll try and leave a link to those down below where I actually go into detail about carving a Celtic weave with nothing more than a simple bench chisel. And in this case, I'm basically making little V grooves, um, and I'll chop in from one side and then chop in from the other side and remove this little chip. So it's kind of like chip carving, but with a chisel and... Uh, carving a Celtic weave. And I'm, I don't have any pattern on here. I'm not using a pencil because I don't want to use another tool. Uh, so I have nothing to follow by. I'm just kind of guessing at where everything needs to go. And that really makes a mess. Um, it's not a beautiful weave and it's not a precise finish. Uh, but you look at it and you know exactly what it is. And it's kind of, I think it fits the box and gives it a very, very handmade feel. Um, I don't know if you can really do much more that's handmade other than just working with a chisel. Then the last thing I want to do is come in and deepen these lines a little bit, clean up anything that's rough in there. And so I'm just going to be basically chopping in along each of these lines or just pushing in along each of these lines. And that'll define the marks and edges a little bit more and make the, uh, the, the carving pop a little bit. So nothing major, but a lot of fun. And then, of course, we're going to finish it with boiled linseed oil and paste wax. Um, I really could not pull myself to finish this with anything other than that. That's <laughs> just the, the finish that I think it would it really deserves. And I really love how this white oak just explodes with that, that rich tone color, especially from the firewood that's been sitting outside and well-seasoned. Um, I'm really, really happy with how this came out. It was kind of a fun experiment and something to play with. I really didn't know what I was doing getting into it, but uh, I got to learn and I gave myself the opportunity to fail. A lot of fun. There you have it. Made a box from a block of firewood using chisels. <laughs> I love these things. They're just so much fun. Uh, now, if you want to see uh, Blue Jean Beekeeping Dad, I'll leave a link to his channel and his challenge video down below. And uh, yeah, this is a lot of fun. What do you want to see me ne make next time with just chisels? Maybe an Elizabethan high boy. <laughs> okay, maybe not. Um, <laughs> You could. It would just. It would take a lot of time. It would take a lot of time. Um, yeah, this is a fun one for me, and I'm looking forward to playing with ideas like this in the future. Uh, if you'd like to comment below, let me know your ideas. I'd love to hear those. I do want to say thank you to the patrons on Patreon. You guys are honestly the reason why I can keep putting out videos like this. I don't put any sponsors up here, so you guys um, provide everything that is needed to make this channel happen. I want to say thank you for that. If you'd like to find out more about Patreon, you can do so right down there. Also, if you'd like to subscribe and see some behind-the-scenes footage, you can do that as well. That's about it for today, and until next time, have a wonderful day.